today's episode, we focus on how to utilize tight ends and fullbacks within a pro-style system. And joining me to talk about this topic is the offensive coordinator at North Dakota State, Tyler Roll. Tyler, always great to talk ball with you. Yeah, absolutely. I really appreciate you having me on and, and taking the time. It's been, you know, a full year now to play ball, and we're all itching to get back and get back on the grass and start coaching again. Well, I know for you that's going to happen here soon, and uh, so there has definitely been a, a long time waiting. Uh, a new addition to the Roll family as well, so congratulations on that. But uh, I'm sure everybody, yeah. including Mama and new baby, are, are ready to get Dad out of the house. Yeah, I appreciate that, yeah. <laughs> No, uh, uh, the little one, Maxwell, who's five, he's been just bagging for football games. And then our two-and-a-half-year-old is just running around like crazy. And then now the new addition, uh, Gabrielle, she's uh, she's been fun. It's been a little bit chaotic, but it's beautiful chaos, and we wouldn't want it any other way. Absolutely. Well, Coach, I appreciate you taking the time. I know you're getting ready to, to ramp up here and get going. Uh, so, you know, appreciate and understand that your time is at a premium. But – um, I was excited we were able to, right before the holidays, uh, get together and do a small exclusive clinic on tight end and, and fullback play and uh, really look at all aspects of it. But uh, we'll talk about a little bit about uh, what we've produced from that later. Um, you know, I think this is an exciting time in football. In, in football, the, the, the pendulum always swings back and forth. So, uh, you know, for you look at maybe the, the mainstream of offenses for a long time, we swung to this, you know, 10 personnel and then. Guys started adding back in a tight end and got to 11 personnel. And you see 11 kind of prominent across the country right now. But, you know, you look at the trend of the 2020 season and you started to see more and more, not just the off the ball tight end, but the inline tight end and full backs and a return to 21 personnel, at least at times and packages within, you know, college football, high school football. And certainly it's, you know, there was a time uh, there was, I think they were saying NFL stood for no fullbacks left, but. Um, that certainly isn't true anymore either when you see some of the best teams in the NFL having success in, in 21. So I think it's an exciting time for football. I know for you, being a former fullback yourself, it has to warm your heart that you see the, the pendulum swinging back this way. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, you can be so extremely multiple with the position, uh, the tight end position. And you know, from, from our standpoint and within our offense at NDSU, you know, we our goal is to be extremely multiple but simple uh, in terms of scheme for our players to cut it loose and play fast. Uh, so, you know, with us, it's it's formationally. How can we uh, find matchups for those guys, and also st- still for our skill guys to put them in positions? And it's you know whether it's you know quick motions, you know, versus man coverage to you know have some communication issues on the other side, but. You know, you can do so much with the tight end position, whether it is flex, though, whether it's in line, whether it's off the ball, you know, split flow, flow zone, um, the front side of your, your pin pole, your outside zone, oh, power. I mean, you know, and then you got all the quick game and at play action, and there's just so much you can do, and you can be so multiple with their skill set based off size, um, based off ability. Uh, you know, for us, and biggest thing is, you know, trying to get some guys with some high football IQ, smart guys, tough guys, athletic guys. Uh, they're willing to lay it on the line for their, for their team. And, you know, obviously low ego guys, because, you know, our biggest goal is to be masters at moving the line of scrimmage. And we know that we need to be blockers first. And then when we do get the opportunity, our group does get the opportunity, be explosive and dynamic in the pass game. And you're starting to see that shift. You know, you look at some of the semifinal games uh, at the FBS level and, I forget which game it was, but some of them tight ends had quite a few touchdowns. Uh, so you are seeing that shift, and it's 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 nice to see kind of the evolution of offensive football, you know, going from a lot of the spread stuff where you're starting to see a little bit more under center, um, under center offense with, you know, old school 21 personnel, some 12 personnel. Uh, and, you know, with us up here, we're able to get into some 13 personnel uh, use an extra lineman at tight end and do a bunch of different things on top of, you know, some of your base personnel. Yeah, you know, when you, you see these kinds of evolutions happen, um, to me, it's it's always that some of the old things start to come back, but they definitely come back in a transformed way. So if we look at, as an example, you know, you can make an argument that the single wing came back with 
the popularity of of teams going to wildcat offenses or you know a lot of these dynamic quarterbacks who can run the football but it's really not the same as single wing football yes there's aspects of it that look the same but it has been transformed and that guy is is different and dynamic and you know the the thing that I see as fullbacks and tight ends make their way back into offense is that these guys are you know it used to be you think about this the uh, a lot of the fullbacks who would get recruited when it was a, a 21 personnel heavy game you know were undersized guards and those those guys who would play tight end were essentially athletic tackles that they just threw you know uh, ten more ten ten more uh, digits on right to make them an eighty something. But they were they were mm-hmm. still kind of those box blockers, and every now and then you might throw them a pop pass or give them a trap. But now you look at how these guys are being used within the pass game, right? You look at you mentioned the semifinal Ohio State. All of a sudden their tight ends were alive. I mean those guys catching balls all over the place, catching touchdowns. You know you look in into the NFL at you know like a Kittle, uh, a use check and. And how those guys are being used. These are very dynamic, um, hybrid type of players. They they can do a lot, right? They're they're getting the ball in the run game. They're getting the ball in the pass game. They're being very dynamic as blockers, and it just like you said, opens up the opportunity for offense. Yeah, yeah, you hit it right on the head there with what the 49ers are able to do with you know extremely multiple and and how they're getting to their formations within their personnel's and. Um, especially living in that 21 personnel with, with their tight end and their fullback on the field and how dynamic they are. And, you know, even handing the ball off to, to their fullback and he's able to get in the end zone. And, you know, you saw in the Super Bowl him catching one of them just little uh, little naked play action swiper and he found a way to get in the end zone. And, you know, thankfully we've got some players with some good skill up here um, who are dynamic and, uh, you know, going back to the offensive lineman playing fullback, we had we have a couple of those kids, but they love it and they understand their role within the offense. They know the role, they understand the role, but they want to expand the role. And if their role is to go block the defensive end on power or isolate the linebacker on one of their ISO plays or get to the perimeter out to the you know the skybox area on any of our pinpole or outside zone, what have you. Yeah, when you execute that at a high level and you can expand your role within our offense, shoot, yeah, we 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 have the ability to get the ball to you out on out in the flat on maybe a, a the pass power boot, you know, and so all those different ways. It's 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 fun and it's it's fun to coach the group because they have a willingness to do it for each other and a um, little bit of meathead ish and want to go you know be the toughest dudes on the field, but but wouldn't have it any other way. The, the thing is, like, in thinking about this, you know, and making that move, whatever level you're at, you know, the, the argument could be, well, we, we don't have those guys. But the truth is, you, you do. They're somewhere on your team, right? They might be playing linebacker. They might be playing uh, the defensive end. They, they might shoot. They might be a bigger safety, right? Because, again, these, these are getting to be some very dynamic guys with what they can do. Uh, you know, it's, it's about thinking out of the box a little bit that, yes, maybe – you haven't built them into your system. They haven't come through because you've been a heavy 10 team or maybe that off the ball 11 um, where that guy, you know, um, didn't, maybe didn't do all the dynamic things you might be looking to do. But these guys are within your system. Like I, I remember, you know, when we made that transition when I was at BW, we were primarily a 10 personnel team. And so it took, all right, this guy's a bigger receiver. You know, we're going to put his hand in the dirt because he's got a nice frame and he's physical and he could block. And, you know, this quarterback over here, he's never blocked a soul in his life, but he's so dynamic and we're just not going to get him on the field because he's third team right now. And, you know, so it, it took looking at it in that way and understanding what we wanted to be able to do, uh, that they're there. You may not have recruited them or you may not have developed them over the years, but they're there within your system because ultimately – they're football players, right? They're guys who love the game. They'll go and block. They'll they'll do all the things you ask them to do, and every now and then you throw them a bone. One hundred percent, and it's finding the passionate ones. And you know, all of us, we have the whistles. I mean, we're we're teachers and educators, and we want to educate and teach and develop these guys. Whether it's you know, the weight room, in the meeting room, on the practice field, and it comes down to some of those individual drills to see if they can do it and you got to stick with them because it does take time 
and you, you find out doing it with some discipline and you know discipline within the fundamentals to execute at a really high level and the accountability within the offense to understand what they're doing so they know what they're doing they have confidence in what they're doing and then they can go play extremely fast um so it's you know it's just finding those right guys because yeah we pulled a kid who was a long snapper backup linebacker who's now in my room is a backup fullback it just you just got to find the right one uh, we talk about it in recruiting just it doesn't matter about the stars it doesn't matter about where they're from you just got to get the right people on the bus and uh, the kids who you know come to your program uh, they come for a reason because they love it. They love the people. They love uh, what it stands for, the tradition. And they're willing, whatever it, whatever it may be, however they can help the team, uh, put them in a position to be successful. So the fundamentals are an extremely big part of this as you build these guys back in. It is going to take uh, some training. It's going to take a focus on the fundamentals needed to really make their position successful. Probably – you know, a situation which isn't ideal is you have those guys in the game and they're in your structure, but they maybe don't pre- present that threat because they're not as physical as you'd like them to be. Um, and that was something, you know, we spent uh, about four hours a, a couple weeks ago right before Christmas uh, with a group of coaches going through and talking about the fundamentals and how you train a fullback and tight end. And uh, those will be available here on Coach Tube um, by the time that this podcast airs. Uh, but Talk to us about that aspect of it, because I know, you know, these guys go out and they work catching the football, maybe not from these same positions or at the same angles that they will have to from maybe a fullback or a tight end. Um, but as you build them back into your offense, the, the blocking is the thing you need to really start to emphasize. And you guys do it extremely well at North Dakota State. You guys are a physical team. Uh, you are known for those guys, those those players, whether uh, they're lined up in the backfield or out on the edge, they're going to be physical for you. So for you, how does that all start to come together in the way that you're going to train them? Yeah, you got to break it down to the base. I mean, the base fundamentals of a block. And, I mean, biggest thing from my standpoint, just starting with what are the no equipment necessary drills that they can do on their own? Uh, and for us, I mean, there's a there's a – aim point there's a first step there's there's an understanding where the second step needs to try to be um so just continuing to uh, have repetition of that footwork of that first step you know and just imagining okay what technique do i have in front of me where are my eyes supposed to be and just staying in that good demeanor staying in good crawling demeanor not getting too high staying um staying down uh, with my hips locked and loaded and ready to roll. So just understanding my first step and just repeating that first step. Okay. And what is my block that is necessary? Is it, is it the backside of a zone scheme? Uh, is it the front side of your, your pin pull? Is it the front side of power? Is it the front side of your, your duo play? Um, so all of those things, I just have them just constantly repeat the first step. What is my technique in front of me? Where do I want my eyes to go? Where my second step needs to get in the ground before contact. All those things and just working on the footwork and just, you know, having fast turnover of the feet. So continuing to work that and, um, you know, and then you talk about fullback stuff. Well, from from a base eye formation alignment, okay, where does my first step need to be? Am I trying to get to the perimeter? Am I going backside for some sort of scheme? Am I thinking about an isolation play? And, you know, just all those things, just understand where is my landmark for my first step? And then you transition to things, okay, how can I really emphasize these guys and get in their second step in the dirt? And, and some drills that will uh, show up on, on the video, just using an easy PVC pipe and getting that second step up and down in the ground fast and quick. So you have that second step in the dirt on contact. Uh, so you got that power in your backside leg through the, the middle of the man. You know, and just doing everything. I'm trying to do everything. Coming off the ball and being a master at moving the line of scrimmage uh, and being a true technician uh, of your position and being just an absolute, um, you know, having the high football IQ and doing what you're supposed to be doing uh, to, to defeat and punish the defender across from you. So just really breaking down all those fundamental drills, uh, giving them some, you know, a category of, you know, drills to do some you know where it's 
no equipment is necessary and somewhere it's just find an easy PVC pipe or even just a line on the ground just to get that foot up and down over to get that second step in the, in, in the ground on contact. When you look at, at training this position group and, you know, l- let's extend this to, you know, the high school level and say a team's looking to put these guys back in, um, you know, again, personnel being at a, a premium personnel in, in your staff. So, you know, you're going to have one guy maybe to train the fullbacks and the tight ends. How do you approach, I guess, the diversity in that group um, versus being able to break down some of those things that are essentially uh, fundamental, right? I mean, it's probably, to me, when I look at it, it's all in the path that it takes to get there. Once you get there, you know, all of it's going to look the same, whether you lined up in the backfield, off the ball, uh, in line. Uh, some of those things start to be the same. So from an efficiency of training, how, how do you train that group that has maybe all three aspects of that? You know, the guy who's in line, the guy who's off the ball, and the guys who's in the backfield. Absolutely efficiently cross train them to get them to maximize the most out of each and every person in that room because you got to coach them all from top to bottom because you absolutely never know when their number is going to get called and when they're going to be needed to go in line uh maybe it's the in the fourth quarter someone got banged up you need to throw someone in there and they got to be on the front side of some sort of down down guard kick out pull back isolation type scheme and they've never played in line but hey they may have had some thrill carryover in individual time because they did it because they're in our room and they're going to do some of the tight end stuff too. So you need to maximize everyone's ability. Um, We will do some, and you're going to see it within the videos, but how we efficiently use both position groups. We'll have, you know, one station doing kickouts and the other station doing the front side of a inline blocking scheme and just truly maximizing their repetitions that they're getting in an individual um, individual period in a practice. Okay. And then now with all of us sitting together, going through our meetings, we're able to point it all out and really coach those fundamentals and those details. And they're all listening. They're all paying attention to every single position because if they just want to be a true inline tight end, okay, but how can we expand you? We may, uh, yeah, we may always be in 21 personnel and run the power, but now, hey, how can we do it out of 12 personnel? How can we use it, a guy who's typically an inline tight end, move him back to that, you know, fullback position and get him to kick out the C gap? You know, so some of those things, they need to have good drill carryover, and we need to cross-train all of them um, just just to make sure that they're all on the same page in all the schemes and all the drills and all the fundamentals and all the techniques. Because when you do get to the point of impact, to the point of contact, to execute the block, there is a lot of carry over there. It's just getting them to that point and who is the best at each one of those um, certain schemes that may be within your offense and put those players in a position to be successful. Yeah, I know when we started to add these guys back in, the, the fun part was kind of game planning, how we were going to use these different skill sets and who was going to be in the backfield a little bit more and who could be in line and, and who were the guys who were like completely flexible, right? You, you think about – what you could do with these kind of personnel groupings. I mean, to be in a 21 and go short yardage and, and get a first down when maybe they threw in personnel to match that. And then, at, you know, at, at a tempo, jump into an empty and run a simple stick route, right? And these guys maybe understand this, this you know, a stick and a flat and those things that they're going to do. Man, you can really stress a defense with these guys in incredible ways and not just thinking within the the – you know, uh, 2112 box, but being able to 2112 box as far as formations, but being able to actually expand and contract with these guys. Absolutely. And, you know, from, you know, meeting one, install one, day one, I told my group, you guys got to be ready to do everything. Absolutely everything within our offense, because we can be in 22, 13 personnel and be in an empty formation. We could start, you know, and, you know, with our shift trade motion, start in a condensed formation, get out to an expanded formation, um, could start out in an expanded formation, reduce back down to a condensed formation and run the ball or even throw play action. Um, all those things, they, that's why, you know, a big thing from my standpoint is just recruiting the, the, the right guys, the smart guys who understand football and learn, have a willingness to learn and expand their knowledge uh, 
for the whole offense and try to teach the entire offense because we can be in 22 personnel and throw an easy flanker drive. We can be in 22 personnel and run, you know, power. We can be in 22 personnel and uh, be an empty and throw four verts. I mean, everything is at our disposal out of each and every personnel. Uh, sometimes it gets a little bit limited in 10 personnel. Um, you know, you ain't probably going to have one of those receivers go and kick out the defense van on our eight-yard power. Uh, but I tell you, some of them would want to try it. So you got to be extremely flexible, and it is fun. Uh, it's neat how uh, to see how, you know, offenses, you know, evolve over the course of, you know, really week to week and in a season. And you find guys who really, you know, come along and, and grow and are truly invested into the offense and understanding the whys, the hows, the X's and O's, um, you know, of, of where they can fit. And you can just continue to put a little bit more on their plate every week within a game plan. Uh, and it, it just, it gets fun because, you know, the one game that we had in, in 2020, we had a fullback kid who scored a few touchdowns. You know, running the ball, was catching the ball, uh, had, a, had a tight end, you know, catch a touchdown. And it was, you know, an easy play action play. Um, so continuing to find ways to utilize those guys within our offenses has been fun, but it's also put us in a position to be really successful and efficient um, and find ways to get explosive plays on the offensive side of the ball too. Absolutely. I know in, in looking at this, uh, in, in utilizing these guys in more of this pro style offense, you watch, you know, the, the 49ers or the Rams or Green Bay, you know, those three guys obviously tightly tied uh, together. The Tom and Washington all coming up through the same system with, with Mike Shanahan and, you know, uh, a guy who's been close to him, like with a Kevin Stefanski with the Browns, or even, you know, something a little bit with what Greg Roman is doing with, uh, you know, the Baltimore Ravens, that you see these guys, as you mentioned, um, being utilized in, in, you know, multiple shifts and trades. And I know coaches all the time are asking about that. And I see them, you know, in, in these different groups or forums trying to formulate – how they do that. And it seems like they get very extraneous with terminology to make all those movements. Is there a way, you know, in looking at this from a terminology perspective to be efficient with how you label those things again, not to overburden the, the players uh, learning and in, in what he needs to know uh, what are the best ways or what recommendations do you have to be being able to add movement for those guys shifts for those guys back in and, you know, multiple movements, right? I think it was the stat, um, one of the, the best teams on offense in, in the 2019 season with the 49ers, and they were moving on 73% of the plays. So how do you accomplish that without getting overcomplicated? Yeah, I think, you know, biggest thing is how can you simplify the terminology? So some, you know, within our play calls, we're not, you know, signal, it's, it's we're huddle, and we're going to send in the play call. So uh, you can't have a ton of verbiage. Some of our play, play calls can get pretty lengthy. Um, but how can you use one word tags for your offense that could potentially mean, you know, a double movement um, or movement for not just one person, but two people, maybe that one word take be a shift and then a motion. So simplify the verbiage, but it also has to have some consistency and maybe you can use letters within the word that you use that correlate to the guys and what they're doing. Uh, so, you, you, I mean, you can go, you know, as far as using, you know, not to give away too much of our offense, but hey, maybe you use the, the, the tag yo-yo, and that's something maybe for uh, a Y moving out. Or, you know, it just you could get so creative, but keep it simple um, for your kids to learn it, and they can have some really good recall on maybe what that one word terminology is. Um, but then you also... I feel like from an offensive standpoint, you can't move just to move. You got to, you got to, if you're going to do a lot of pre-snap movement, you got to use it intelligently. And whether it's to find, you know, the different mismatches, maybe it's to get a matchup uh, at the line of scrimmage. Maybe it's to get a matchup out on the perimeter. Um, maybe they're fitting their defensive differently with some different motions or cross motions. Uh, it's as simple as to, you know, ID zone or man coverage, you know, you can, but if you're going to do it, you got to do it smartly because that box or those pictures can change for the five guys inside. Um, and you get, you do got to be smart with, you know, keeping those kids, the O line 
uh, having the ability to play extremely fast. Yeah, absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. I know that's something we always would look for is, is what's our purpose in doing. I mean, does it look cool? Yeah, but I'm not going to do it because it looks cool. I'm going to do it because it affects the defense. So, you know, as an example, it goes along with what you said. Uh, there was a particular team we played who um, they were a two safety team, and, but they would rotate a lot. And we knew that, you know, one of those guys was just much better at being that free safety deep guy who could go and play center field. And that other guy could really run support. And so, you know, we figured out uh, a, a movement that forced them to switch those responsibilities. And so what happened? Well, you know, that guy who was run supporting all the time when we went play action was flat foot and we were getting people over the top. And that guy who didn't necessarily like to be that run support guy, would rather play center field. And that guy had to come up and hit and we were just able to be really physical with him and get what we wanted there. So you look for those kinds of opportunities because I really believe, uh, you know, when you move, when you use that in an offense, the defense has three opportunities to be wrong. One, it's the recognition. Two, it's the communication. And three, it's the adjustment that they need to make. And someone told me, no, it's 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 33 because multiply that by 11. So somewhere they're going to be wrong, right? Whether that is is all of them, one of them, you know, could cause a run fit error, could uh, cause uh, – you know, a coverage bust, whatever, uh, done intelligently, you'll find those opportunities. Absolutely. I could, I could not agree more. And it's just continuing to find ways to put your guys in the best position to be successful with their matchups within your offense. Uh, and football fun. I mean, just to continue each and every week to, to try to, you know, beat an opponent and find a scheme. And it's just, it's the best. Where you have the best profession and continuing to, invest within, you know, football and uh, continuing to do the right things within our profession. It's, it's pretty neat. Absolutely. And um, just to tie things up again, uh, you'll be able to find the links for coaches courses in the show notes uh, on coachingcoordinator.com or they're right there in whatever app you're using on your phone to listen to this podcast. There should be a live link in there as well. Coach did, uh, like I said, four hours with us. Uh, we have three sessions that we put together. One is training the fullback uh, on the fundamentals of the fullback position. The other is training the tight end fundamentals of the tight end position. And then the third is the application of those guys in the play action passing game it was just an incredible clinic. And uh, we're excited that coach put it together. Um, we, we uh, definitely uh, uh, produced that thing up with uh, some of the coach paint uh, that we have. So you're going to see all these things that coach is talking about really highlighted uh, and in detail, it'll be very clear to see uh, what the coaching points are and what you need to do. And uh, we're excited to put that out there for you on Coach Tube. And uh, you know, a reminder, as we've had all week long, uh, for Lawrence First and Goal Clinic at lfgf.coachesclinic.com, an incredible lineup there of FBS, FCS coaches, some small college coaches as well, a few NFL guys, uh, coaching legends like Bob Wiley, offensive line coach. Uh, you know, uh, kicking around somewhere right now. I'm sure he'll be with the team next year. And uh, just, uh, again, an incredible lineup that supports uh, brain tumor research, pediatric brain tumor research, and cancer services, an incredible cause. And, and they really need you right now uh, because their camp that they've run every year and, and raised a lot of money from has been shut down because of COVID. So please consider attending. Uh, $79 for an individual, $300 for a staff of five. A great price for 160 speakers and some of the best guys in the game. Um, well, Coach, again, I appreciate you taking the time today. Best of luck to you guys as you uh, roll into the 2021 spring season. Thank you. I appreciate it. And, Keith, we all appreciate it. Um, the game of football and continuing to expand our knowledge and invest within each other to get better. And you're either green and growing or you're ripe and dying. And those who are green are, are continuing to uh, get better every single day. And, and my, hats off to you and and what you do for us. So thank you. And thank you for the opportunity to talk uh, some NDSU football and, and about our tight ends, fullbacks, and how we utilize them in the play action pass game.